I'll admit that um, was it losing track of the days. It's it's Saturday night, <clears throat> Friday, Wednesday. Thursday night to Friday morning. I mean, all these ideas in my head and just, you know, where was I four days ago? Where was I 12 days ago? And I went to the store. Should I go to the store? So Thursday, it all kind of caught up to where I, I don't think I went to bed till five. I, I remember seeing 430 on the clock. So that was a three hour sleep day for me. Any, any surprises about how people are coping and people struggling that you might not have thought of would struggle with this? The main struggle is, is going to be staying present. Um, just, just staying on, on what is not, not just on what's happening because we have plenty of that. It's just being aware of what you can control. Remember the very first time we talked about this, I gave you my crazy routine that gave me something to think about that would protect not only myself, but protect my family and show some kind of insight into, okay, I feel good because I did the right thing. So then that brings us to the, to the, to one thing that, that, that <clears throat> I really would, that would be wish number four is people start looking at their mental health during, during something like this. Um, you know, we, we, we can go for a walk, we can go for a run, we can do, you know, self-care is so critical for good mental health. Uh, but right now, I think people are going to have a hard time finding the motivation uh, for doing those things that they enjoy. Um, you know, even if you're not infected, even if you're not ill physically, it's going to affect you mentally. So every time you turn the TV on or you listen to the radio or you watch, look at social media, you're just flooded with guidelines and precautions and you know, what do you do, what to stay away from, but you, you don't hear much about how do you take care of your mental health during something so chaotic? Um, and that's not okay. It's really not. You know, we, we the whole world is suffering from, from what we call an adjustment disorder, how you adjust to something like this. Uh, you have to adapt to, to something that is called, now everybody's calling it, quote unquote, the new normal. Um, and that by itself, you know, looking at the world differently causes a lot of anxiety and depression. So, I mean, ultimately, what, what, what can you do about it? You know, first of all, we can't hug or kiss or shake hands, but we can still communicate. We have to be grateful that in this day and age, we even have this. We have FaceTime. We have other ways to stay in touch with the family. Um, you know, social isolation is just kind of a deep and dark and depressing state. Uh, but, but there are ways to, to take care of yourself because we have this amazing technology that we're using right now as we speak. Uh, just so take the time, call your friends, check on your family, see how things are going. Um, stop talking about this, you know, get, get, get something positive about it by communicating Exercise, you know, it's, it's not only for mental health, but physically, uh, you, you need to go for your walks and your hikes and little run outside and, of course, maintain your social distance, but, but you have to breathe. I have an acute, active, barely starting to get better case who begged me today if she could go outside, and I said, please do. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you last time I seen so much Chappelle and Robin Williams movies and and looking at, I, I was on the third Rocky uh, earlier today. Um, so with this constant barrage about the coronavirus, distraction is, a, is an incredibly good way to reduce anxiety. So read a book, paint, color, cook, bake, take a nap, uh, dance, uh, joke around with the kids, practice meditation, yoga, anything that will take five minutes of your, of your mind away from all this. And so that doesn't mean that you have to disconnect. You stay present, but if you cannot control this, then stay present on the things you can't control. If you hold on to what is good in your life, and that's who's in that house right now, that's who you can still talk to, that's who is still healthy, that's who you don't have to worry because they're feeling well, you, know, you still have to reach out. And if you reach, have to reach out to a professional help, if you have to contact the National Alliance of Mental Illness helpline, 
please do so because just talking about it is is extremely therapeutic. Uh, 